What's cracking guys, welcome back to the Trinket Shoe Repair channel. As always, I'm Dan. Now, today's video is a bit of fun that loads of you have requested actually since the beginning of the channel, and that is to see my shoe collection. And it's something I've put off for a while, but I thought I've got some unusual things to show you that you might not expect. So I hope you enjoy it, it might be interesting, so let's go. Okay, once again, welcome back, guys. Hope you're all doing well. So yeah, my shoe collection, this is gonna be as it is today, the stuff I've got today, some of the things I've had for a few years. But um, the reason I put it off is because other videos you see, I know uh, Kirby Allison, a lot of you guys will follow, uh, did one and it's all traditional shoes, gents, uh, fine dress shoes and such, at a sort of value of 10, 20,000 pound footwear collection. This ain't that kind of video. I'm just gonna show you the stuff I have and I think you guys will get a kick out of it. So let's jump straight into it with the first one, which is for no particular reason, my favorite boot, and you'll see why in a minute, and I guarantee none of you will guess. We've got my 32 Hobush snowboard boot. They're just wicked, the color and the look of these boots. Specifically, I like the laces. Not all snowboard boots come with laces. They're all like ratchet fastenings and such. But um, Hobush, a special edition. Hobush is a famous athlete. But more importantly, why I like these bad daddies is because they're snowboard boots. So of course they're different to any sort of footwear. And I'll tell you a little bit about how they work for those of you that aren't snowboarders or skiers. Obviously super, super tough, super, super waterproof because they spend most of the time in sub-zero temperatures and the snow and the ice. But what I really like about them is when your foot and your, your calf really is inside, the way it wraps around your ankle and your calf is extremely solid but comfortable. So it almost feels like you're wearing a cast, like a medical cast, you can't move anything but it's comfortable and really super warm. And the reason it's so supportive and stiff is for snowboarding purposes, this is how it works. So uh, when you're on a snowboard, the boot is locked into the snowboard and you essentially steer with your hips and forwards and backwards. So as your hips go forwards, it pushes your whole leg, or your, your lower leg and your shin forwards, which turns the snowboard in effect. I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's why it's so solid. It's because you're transferring your weight directly onto the snowboard to steer. And I wasn't sure whether to include this bit in the video in case it tainted the seriousness of the channel, but here's some old potato cam footage of myself dressed up as a penguin trying to jump off a little cliff and crashing through a tree. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's enough of that. Let's see what's next. All right, guys, let's get a little bit more serious now. I'll show you my first pair of actual dress shoes, boots rather. So we've got these. These are my Barker's Calder's Brogue boots. Now, this is probably the first pair of boots I bought that was uh, more than 100 quid. First pair of boots I really invested in, and they happen to be my favorite. I think I paid maybe uh, 350, 400, something like that for these. Um, and the main reason was I hadn't ever had a pair of tan footwear, to be honest. And I just think they're really striking if you uh, pull it off with your outfit, they look fantastic. And they're also a very comfortable but sturdy boot. So day night soles and heels, but with a leather midsole and a storm well. So um, highly recommend. I love these boots. Not ideal for standing on all day when I'm at work here, which I'll get to in a bit, I'll show you what I wear at work. But evenings out, things like that, can't rate these highly enough. And they also polish up really well with mirror gloss. Okay, so moving on to number three, you'll have heard me just mention about being on my feet all day at work. So bear in mind, this is a workshop. It's messy, there's ink, there's glue. So I don't want to be wearing my smartest shoes all the time in case they get trashed. So enter Tom Taylor's. This is a brand called Tom Taylor. And these are cheap. I paid about 40 pounds for these, but it doesn't matter if they get ink on them, if they get glue on them, if I scratch them on the machines. So I can wear them for work. And not to mention, um, some of you guys will know that I've got a bit of a bad foot at the minute. I've got a small broken bone in my foot. So some of the dress shoes, they're very comfortable if you've got a healthy foot, but if you've got anything like myself, if you've got a bad bone, they can be a bit painful if you wear them all day. So something like this that is much softer, we can even put insoles in them and such. Uh, this is ideal for me to wear all day. Next little number is, where are we? One, two, three, four. We got my Timberland Radfords, all right? So I like these because they are the olive green and they're Nubuck, obviously, which is pretty low maintenance. So this is something that is a mid ground. I can wear this all day for work. I can wear them for nights out and stuff. Big fan of Tim's. I think everyone should have a pair of Timberlands. And boot number five, I've actually got a bone to pick 
with Red Wing Guy, who you might have seen in the Halloween special. And the clue's in the phrase, got a pair of Red Wings. All right, so these are the Iron Rangers, and they are a cool boot. They're made of harness leather, which is really tough stuff. So originally, you know, going way back, these were made for miners, so they're really tough stuff for them to wear on their feet, protect their feet in the mines. But Red Wing Guy talked me into getting a pair of these. He said they're so fantastic, they're amazing. But as I said, with the harness leather and stuff, they are tough boots, and these just tore my feet up. My poor, soft little feet couldn't handle the Iron Rangers, and it's all Red Wing Guy's fault. But drugs aside, they are a good boot. They are a cool boot. I do recommend them. They're just not for me personally. So next pair, I'm going to really mix it up on you guys again. Let's see if you can guess what they are before I bring them out. We've got squat shoes, specifically for using in the gym when we're doing squats. Two different pairs, obviously. These are both Nike. Uh, they're called the Nike Romalio 2 and the Romalio free so let me tell you how they're made and why they help you do a squat okay so a quick little background on weightlifting and how it works some of you guys older fans of the channel will know that i've been heavily into weightlifting powerlifting specifically when we're lifting weights we want to have as much of a solid contact on the ground as possible because we're transferring all the weights say it's a squat the weight is on our back and all that power is going through our body into the ground so we don't want any cushion on our feet because we just lose power transfer like a sponge so one of the main um factors with a squat shoe is that it's rock solid okay and on the inside it's rock solid as well and that's not to say they're not comfortable of course they have a very nice insole albeit firm but it's solid so you get all of that power transfer otherwise it would be just like you're standing on a cushion or a space hopper and trying to move this heavy weight it just doesn't work and sure some people will opt to just do this barefoot and you get that same solid contact with the ground which is fine but the second factor that squat shoes have is a raised heel and it's quite a significant raise this is about i think with on the website the specific in buying it is about one inch but it does make a world of difference and the reason for that is we're going to talk about anatomy again see if i can do a decent um description for you let's imagine this is your lower leg uh, when you squat down your knee naturally moves forwards so this causes your ankle to flex if your ankle is really stiff you'll get so far it can't flex anymore and then your heels come off the ground and of course you're not stable at that point. So what squat shoe does is it reduces the angle that the ankle has to flex because basically you're starting at a, a negative angle and it's coming down like this. So basically the raised heel allows you to squat deeper, safer and more comfortably. And again, I may as well just stay on a roll with this old footage stuff and show you an old clip of myself hitting a squat in some squat shoes. Right, so the next up is what I consider a staple in any man's wardrobe, and that is a decent pair of black dress shoes. So these are my Crockett and Jones. First pair of decent dress shoes that I bought, to be honest, and the first pair that are calf leather. So you do notice that in the uppers, that they are very soft, they're like slippers. We may as well quickly follow up with something you guys might recognize, and that is these John Lobs. So these were the John Lobs from the uh, comparison video I did last week, the English shoes versus Chinese shoes. So uh, these are probably my new favorite dress shoes. They're certainly the most expensive, but incredibly soft calf leather, uh, blind stitched, and just a very subtle broguing and a nice patina on them. They're just extremely comfortable shoes. If you ever get your chance to try some of these John Lobs guys, I would highly recommend. All right, so to switch direction again, we now got my van's old school high tops. So I don't like to be dressy dressed all the time. Sometimes I like to be a bit casual cash. And again, white trainers is another staple. I think everyone should have. These are so versatile to go with everything. And of course, just like super, super comfy. I've still got more gym shoes, guys. I mean, I spend most of my time in the gym. I may as well show you everything I've got out, haven't I? So this is my favorite brand. This is Rider Wear. Uh, nothing really special about these. These are just, you know, so you don't rock around the gym in your dress shoes or your work boots or whatever. These are just a generic gym shoe. But again, another Rider Wear. Now this is what you would call a deadlift slipper. So repeating myself with what I said about the squat shoes, really with having solid contact to the floor, but these don't have a raised heel, uh, specifically because you don't want to have a raised heel when you're performing a deadlift. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, I'll put another clip down. But essentially you want flat feet and very solid contact with the floor. And even if you're not doing deadlifts, these are just a nice comfy flat boot. 
to rock around in. But yeah, let's have a look at my favorite deadlift. I know some of you guys really are quite interested and like to see me my sporting ventures. I've been out of it for a little while from injuries and stuff, but this was about uh, two, two and a half years ago. I think this was my all time best deadlift. It was 260 kilos uh, when I weighed 80 kilos myself and it won, uh, won myself first place in that particular competition. So there you go. So next I've got one more sensible pair and then one last thing I actually forgot about, but here we have my Thursday boots. Okay, so these are a nice mix of comfort and ruggedness, matte black uppers. Um, now something that I've done on these is I've repaired them in a pretty awful way. We've got logger soles there, a half sole and day night heels on the back. And I just wanted to show you that because this is sometimes a job um, when it's my own shoes, and I'm not really particularly fussed about what I'm doing. I just need them function over fashion. Sometimes I will repair them in any old which way I want because I can and it works. But Thursday boots, I would recommend them. They are pretty comfy to be honest. This is a boot that I could see myself wearing all day. Very comfortable. So um, yeah, highly recommend. And last but definitely not least, we've got my Alpha Menace football boots <laughs> all right american football I should clarify we've got viewers from all over the globe here haven't we but yeah not much to say about these really other than they're rock solid plastic on the bottom obviously you've got your cleats your studs whatever you want to call them for getting grip and traction in the mud and we get a hell of a lot of mud here in the uk when we're playing and when you put them on they might at first feel quite tough but it's one of those things once you get running around or sprinting around rather you <laughs> i guess your feet almost numb up a little bit you don't really notice it so much um, they're designed to take explosive impact and that's exactly what they do and it works. And while we're talking about these bad daddies, I may as well answer a question that I get all the time whenever we talk about this subject. Everybody loves to compare rugby to American football or Britball as it's called here. And the answer I always give is if you speak to anybody that's played both sports, actually played both sports, they always say they're incredibly similar sports. They're both very physical, both very tough. The reason I preferred football uh, is really the tactics side of it. It's almost like playing poker. You know, each team, defense, offense has their plays that they're going to run. And I just love that tactics side of it. It makes it uh, seem a lot of, hell of a lot more fun to me personally. Anyway, that is it. That was short and sweet, the video. I hope you guys found it entertaining. I hope you found it interesting. I figured why not throw it together for you and uh, see who enjoys it. But thank you so much for joining me. I have got a cool shoe repair video lined up for the next video, so watch out for that. If you made it all the way to the end of this video though, hit like, it really does help me with the channel and also tells YouTube what you like watching. Remember to hit the notifications bell so you are kept in a loop every time I upload a new video. And as always, if you have a shoe repair inquiry, if you want to talk to us about something we might be able to do, uh, visit the online shop where you can buy polish and shoe cream anyway at trinkshoerepairs.com and we can talk about your job. But that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, watch out for the next video. It's going to be quite a cool shoe repair video. I've also got the 200k special coming up, which is a secret for now. And we've got a Q&A coming up. So we've got loads coming up. But that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to get out of here and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.